this hair show is called a recovery hair show. It's because everybody in the show is a person that's recovering from mental health. Whatever you've been through in your life that you feel like you need recovery from. I've been diagnosed with stress and anxiety. I had paranoid schizophrenia. Depressed. I'm going to go for what I really like to do, and that is play the flute. What you learn from here is something that you have to get within yourself once you leave out of these doors. So let's think about your story and how you'd like to tell it. There's drama, there's documentary, there's animation, and together we're going to make short films about your life. Everybody here had stories, and that I wasn't by myself. Actualmente está las amenazas de los virus y está claro que no estábamos preparados. Ellos solucionan los problemas. Ellos salvan vidas. Ellos sanan gente. Hay algo que no se está que no se está mencionando del todo y muchas de las personas que están falleciendo no solamente son personas mayores sino son personas de extractos sociales. Es decir, el de los ricos del mundo que han blindado y están tejiendo fronteras alrededor de sus propios privilegios. Otra vez han intentado volver a reactivar ¿no? un poco la culpabilización de la víctima que ya se hizo. Yo creo que, que todo lo que estamos viviendo nos está abierto como una, especie, como una especie de grieta. Es como si de repente tuviéramos un pequeño minuto de lucidez para que colectivamente podamos ver lo que es importante y por dónde se nos está desangrando la vida, ¿no? Ok, you're Mr. Poland. Ah, yes, you have diabetes. A look at our society reveals an alarming rise in heart disease, cancer, obesity, and of course, diabetes. With advances in medicine, it would seem that people should be healthier now than ever before. However, it's starting to appear the opposite is the case. Most experts agree, we have a serious problem. There are millions of quote unquote skinny fat people who are metabolically sick inside, but do not look characteristically sick on the outside. If you look back historically, I think you'll find we've always had carbs and sugar. So what suddenly changed? The marketers are spending hundreds of billions of dollars. They are spending the money because it works. Do you think you're affected by food marketing? Most people are, whether they want to admit it or not. Fast food freaks me out now. I'm not, my husband is. Know what real food is and what it is not. Figure out what process it went through to get to your plate and then make a decision if it's good enough for you. Milk, something all of us grew up with something most of us were encouraged to drink to grow big and strong. For decades, the image that has been cultivated around milk is a healthy one. But is milk really healthy? Critics claim that milk can cause civilization diseases such as allergies, diabetes or migraines, even cancer. Those for and against milk accuse each other of setting an aggressive tone. As a result, milk is one of the most disputed products in the food industry. This is 30 years of brainwashing, so that even today every last person believes that milk is healthy. Consumers are increasingly uncertain. Whom should one believe? We are on the search for answers. Is milk healthy? Or is milk bad for you? The devil told him to stab the prettiest girl that he's seen. I'm gonna see the white light now, you know? Am I, is this my time? <laughs> he was motivated by a disorder, a disease of his mind.
Sean Clifton is one of the sickest patients the hospital has seen, with a dual diagnosis of obsessive compulsive disorder. Is it very common for patients like Sean Clifton, who've committed murder or attempted murder or very serious violence, to be released into the community? That's the mandate. That's what we're told to do. That's what our job is. And I felt like he had punched me. After the court hearing, he was uh, charged with not criminally responsible. He's very honest. He did a very bad thing, but he's still a very good person. And that's why we can never give up on these people, and because they are good people. It's a bit strange when we did this, because we're being young. Right now, there are many, many, many young men who have problems with sexual dysfunction because of the impact porn has had on them. How old were you when you started watching porn? The first time I watched porn, I think I was 11. Porn sites attract more visitors each month than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. Whether we start using porn at 6 or 16, for many of us, its effects can mean that our sex lives aren't always fun. But it has a real impact on people because it creates performance anxiety. If we compare ourselves to porn stars, well, there's a good chance we'll feel that we don't quite measure up. And yes, young people say certain images haunt them. Because pornography is a false, it's a misrepresentation. Yeah, that's it. Sex is a basic need. <laughs> India has a total of about 200 million people with disabilities. But you don't know us. You don't see us. So, how will you know about us? The societal thought is limited to just donating, to earn goodwill and blessings. There is no dearth of competency in these things. No dearth of intelligence. No dearth of capability either. The place I have for my mother in my heart I wanted to express that. So I kept trying and today I can draw anyone's portrait. Self-respect, no, no, no consideration. I have this humble request to the society. We don't want your sympathy or empathy. We just want an equal opportunity. At first I felt that I can't do this task or that task. But when I found out about ABBF, met the people there, met other disabled people who are performing, since then I have become more confident. If those people can do it, why can't I? I'm so happy. I finally did this. That's not gonna help you. Come well, I'm on. fucking mad right now. Can we leave this he's room? He's telling me he's gonna punch me. Can we leave and this? And he's telling me to leave this room. Justine? What do you want me to do? <laughs> he's just very sick. Michael is in for murder. And I said, Michael's killed himself. And he said, no, uh, Michael has killed your mother. And Carol is in for minor assaults. Until I enter, I um, punched the wall of that deep. She was the most challenging patient. That one was a bad one. Why do you think you do that? Mm -hmm. Feels good sometimes. I think he suffers every day from the loss of his life, the life that he could have had. Once they recover, they then realize that they've done this terrible, terrible thing. The sticker is our form of good behavior. I didn't do it as deep this time. Mm -hmm. One day he just said, I'm ready, and I want to go into the community, and that then gave us the, the reason to go ahead. There was a great deal of uncertainty. I guess a degree of sadness as we all started going into lockdown. 
people went from thinking, oh, this is just another flu, to, oh my God, we're all gonna die. I got a text message and then a phone call from Dr. Chris Guan explaining that VGH was potentially gonna run out of ventilators if the first wave was out of control. I said, how can I bring my medical and engineering knowledge to bear? There's this Facebook group online and they were looking for anyone who felt like they could contribute in some way to help develop ventilators for an anticipated shortage. And I commented on it. I messaged him personally. And then he said that um, a cosmic group had been started. And the rest is history. We are an open source community started originally in Vancouver, BC, which is dedicated to developing medical supplies, first and foremost for COVID-19. We tested it, we validated it, and uh, we showed that it could be done, it should be done, and that we had the first solution available. I've been sitting here to find out who killed Felix, Willard and Rupert. Is it a mystery? Supernatural? What happened? And it weren't me, okay? It just wasn't me. Who are you? Oh. <laughs> From an outsider in, you'd just feel like just perfect life, perfect girl, perfect smile, beautiful. She was always the popular one, so she was always the one who had the group of friends that everyone kind of wanted to be a part of. Excitable, uh, quite loud and giggly and, and really, really good fun. She was just a fun, fun person to, to be around. In my head, I'm thinking, nah.